just received uh, a video from Rowan about some facts about what's governing us here in Australia and probably all around the world. And it deals with uh, the proclamations and also a little bit on how these governments have been able to, uh, to murder its citizens and what's behind it. So I'll, I'll leave you with Rowan uh, to explain a few, a few facts that, that are the reality of it we should all know and we should all take heed because uh, without us knowing this information they're going to be pulling the wool over, <laughs> over our eyes for, for many years to come. So uh, take a good listen to, um, to some of the latest finds from Rowan. Thank you. Hi everybody, welcome back to the Justinian Deception. Hopefully uh, the sound is a bit better in this video. Sorry about the last ones. I was very sick actually when I did one of the other ones. Uh, my apologies. So I'm just, this new video, um, the Crimes Act 1900 New South Wales, the alternative with it. name for this video was how to murder someone in New South Wales and get away with it. This, I'm going to show you how <coughs> This corporation, this uh, administrator that's come into the Commonwealth of Australia, called itself Australia, is impersonating our government and what it's done to our jurisdiction, what it's done to our laws. It doesn't have constitutional jurisdiction. It's not the correct entity. So what they've done is they've put everything into legal fictions which require consent. So all our law, even the Crimes Act, requires consent and I'll show you how they've done that. Uh, they did it firstly by defining the definition of a person. So they changed that. A person, I've got a hundred year old dictionary, Webster's International. It used to be a man, woman or child. But now a corporation is defined, uh, sorry, a person is defined as a corporation, uh, a company or a society. So we're going to do a big circle. This is the Crimes Act, 1900, uh, the current version. You can look this up online if you want. So we're going to have a look at how this works. So I just want to talk to you about an officer. So this is a police officer. When you click on officer in the act, this is the definitions. This is section four that comes up. Officer in relation to a body corporate or public company includes a person who has been appointed or acts as an auditor of the body corporate or public company. So a police officer is an auditor. Now if you Google auditor, that is somebody who looks at accounts. So when the police pull you over and demand your driver's license, they're looking for your account. And all this stems from your birth certificate, because I know people go, well, I didn't have a driver's license and I got caught, but you did have a birth certificate, so that's what the document you have to deal with. But we'll get to that. So an officer is a person who has been appointed as an auditor of a public company. So when they pull you over, they, they want to make sure you're a member of their private company or public company. I don't think it's public. I think that's private, uh, public being, uh, the way the US Federal Reserve sets it up but it's not a Commonwealth of Australia public company it's an Australian public company and Australia is a foreign if you had a look at my other video if it's gone up yet a foreign territory under the Citizenship Act so what's a person so a person is a master and an employer severally include any society company or corporation Jeez, there's a uh, distinct lack of men and women in that, isn't there? So, <clears throat> what they've done there is use the word include. Include, if you want to understand the maxim, uh, exclusio unius est, oh sorry, espressio unius ex exclusio alterius, which I'll bring up in a moment. Um, just change the word included to is, because that's in construction of uh, any legislation, that's what include means. It excludes all else, all others. And there it is. I would learn this one back to front, guys. This is really important. A principle in statutory construction. 
when one or more things of a class are expressly mentioned, others of the same class are excluded. So if we go back to our previous slide after looking at that, included a society, company or corporation, well there's no men and women in there, there's no people, an officer is an auditor, it's not a police officer. So this is what you've got to look for, the way they've written these things. This is written really badly compared to the one I showed you, at least I used as well as in the Acts Interpretation Act on a federal level. So this is state level at New South Wales, uh, which is a company called NSW, which is a mining company registered in Western Australia, as we've previously discussed. So a person, the legal, there we go, that's how the court is required to translate or understand the previous definitions of person and officer. So anything else other than what is included there is excluded. So a person is nothing more than a society, company or corporation. A legal fiction, an assertion accepted as true, though probably fictitious, to achieve a particular goal in a legal matter. And they've certainly achieved their goal. <coughs> Excuse me. So the legal fictions are those three things. A society is a legal fiction, a company is a legal fiction, and a corporation is a legal fiction. Even property ownership, as it says there, is a legal fiction. So a legal fiction requires consent. Um, so you can see now that a person is defined as a corporation, which is the one that we're ultimately under, and a, legal, a corporation is a legal fiction, and a legal fiction requires consent. So you can see now that they've used the word person in the Crimes Act 1900, which is the one that has murder and all that sort of stuff in there, and they've just made the whole thing consensual. I just wanted to put this one up, guys. You know all about this, the all capitals. So Jesus there with one capital as a name, Jesus in all capital. That's just a picture of some letters. At the end of the day, if you want to take it back, we, you know, we came from the glossa to the dog Latin to the trademark. But what it actually is, and it is probably crown copyright, that bottom Jesus there. So that's just a picture of some letters. It's nothing more. It's not a word. It's not a noun. It's not a proper noun. It's not a name. It is what it is, which is a picture of some letters. A J, an E, an S, a U, and an S. That's all it is. It doesn't have any meaning in English. And you just, uh, people need to get their head around how simple this really is and what they've done and how good the trick is. There seems to be some sort of correlation between the size of a group and how stupid it is. And when you get a group as big as West, the Western society, you know, everything operating under the United Nations, it doesn't even know how to read. And that, that's contagious. This is... Uh, <laughs> the shared delusion nobody can read but they all think they can and uh, the law doesn't care what people think they can do the law cares what actually exists the facts and there's the facts so if you want to look up any styles manual the Chicago the Oxford the Australian uh, it'll tell you the same thing um, but it no one ever tells you what the all capitals are and it is literally a picture of some letters So let's have a look at this, how this works. So here we go, I've just picked a random one here, which is mandatory life sentence for murder of police officers, if, uh, in case you're considering it, 19B. A court is to impose a sentence of imprisonment for life for the murder of a police officer. Okay, so police officer, so we know that that's a police auditor. And an auditor is someone looking at their account. So if they pull you over, look at your account, and you kill them uh, while they're doing their duty, and as a consequence or in retaliation for actions undertaken by that or any other police officer in the execution, uh, the person convicted of the murder knew or ought to have reasonably known to have known that the person killed was a police officer and intended to kill the police officer or was engaged in criminal activity that risks serious harm to police officers. So what they're saying is the person, so if you're a, a company corporation or society, you can be charged with murder if you kill your auditor. It doesn't say a man can't kill a police officer, an auditor. It doesn't say a man can't kill another man. And this is a scary thing. This is what I was saying previously is that if you know how to read this, you know, it, it's scary because they've removed murder as a crime uh, if you are holding, 
your birth registration, the correct one, which is the certificate of birth in New South Wales, or as in the last video if it's gone up, which was the, um, the form of information of live birth or stillbirth. As long as you're not an agent for a company when you kill somebody, you're okay. Because this law just says <laughs> um, it's only the person that can't kill and it's only the officer that can't be killed. So, and they had to do this because they, like I said before, they don't have constitutional jurisdiction. So they had to make everybody into a company to get jurisdiction over them. And that's why they changed the definition of person to a corporation, company or society. Um, but when you go and stand in that court, unless you're a, per, a corporation, company or society, well, section 19B of the Crimes Act 1900, along with every other section, does not apply to you. It, it's inert. So um, in New South Wales, if, as long as you can work out how to get out of your corporate responsibilities with the birth certificate, which is basically send it back and don't hold it and don't take any consideration, so no payment, no dole, no Medicare, don't get any benefit from it. Um, and then that's... And this is really scary, guys, because someone could kill you using this. So this is the um, Criminal Procedures Act, 1986. Certain defects do not affect indictment. So this is, once again, New South Wales, the, uh, the mining company. So I want you, uh, we're going to have a look at F. So they've said there's basically a bunch of things here that won't affect the indictment. You can't argue against it. But I want you to have a look at what F is because this tells you way more. So the indictment is not affected for designating any person by the name of his or her office or other descriptive appellation instead of by his or her proper name. So once again, there's a web person. So that's a corporation, company or society and his or her office. Well, there's your mister. So this is why they have to call you Mr. Smith. Mrs. Jones. They have to give you, so they're saying they can do that. Now this means that if you've got an office, this isn't a name, it's not on your birth certificate, Mr. Mrs. Miss, they're not on your birth certificate. So they're saying you've got a job, but you didn't get paid, did you? You haven't been paid for this. They haven't disclosed this contract of employment to you. You've just been uh, left to try and guess and work it out. And it says, instead of by his or her proper name. So they're saying they're using false names. Using a false name is an offence under the other acts that I showed you. So this is an equity maxim. I suggest you just Google equity maxims. They're all here. They're good to look at. Equity will not assist a volunteer. A volunteer is defined in equity as one who has not offered consideration for a benefit they have received or expect to receive. So, if you've forgotten to get paid, you know, you're a volunteer. So that's where your fee schedule came in. You hear, hear people talk about fee schedules. So, the one charged, interestingly enough, is the one who stands up in court. That's it, because they're the one who stands to the charges. That's the official definition. So, if you're going in and going, yep, well, they're calling out that this, uh, this false appellation that they can, you're, they're calling out your office to see who's going to turn up to represent the company that they're, they're charging. And it's interesting because you've got to look at who, who owns that company, what's the constitution of that company, you know, what are the documents of incorporation of that company. You don't know any of that. And that because you go in there thinking you're being charged by a man in a court with a judge who's a man and you're being a man or a woman whatever the case may be, but you're not. You're the agent for a company. You're a person. And they just, it was very easy. You only had to change one word and the whole legal system changed the definition of person. They could just switch it all over to um, legal, legal fictions. Guys, this is the Corporations Act 2001. In Australia, all the states, territories sort of they had all their own laws and it was getting very hard because if one law got changed then it didn't sort of mesh with the other states laws. So what they did was they create all the states handed their corp power of incorporation over to the, the federal government. And so we got the Corporations Act 2001, 
it's a federal law in force latest version so this is uh, the law that technically all corporations within the company of Australia should be operating under. But I want to show you something very strange. If you note up the top left hand corner there, it's a big tick and it says in force latest version C2109 C00216. So they're telling you this is in force. But I don't think it is. I think this is a lie and I'll show you why. So the commencement, this act commences on a day to be fixed by proclamation. Okay, well that's pretty straightforward, so there must be a proclamation. Let's have a look at that, shall we? Corporations Act 2001 Proclamation. I appeared John Hollingsworth, written in all capitals, nice trademark there. Governor, Governor General, or Governor General, it's hyphenated, of the Commonwealth of Australia, acting with the advice of the Federal Executive Council under Section 2 of the Corporations Act 2001, fixed 15th of July 2001 as the date on which this act commences. Okay, so that's fine. Up here, it says, no longer in force. Well, that's interesting. And there's details there. So let's have a look at the details and see what it says. So it says, okay. On the 1st of October 2006, uh, it was repealed by other repealing, repealed by the operation of Section 32 of the Legislative Instruments Act 2003. No longer in force. So the proclamation is not in force. Surely the Act is not in force. Why would you remove a proclamation from force? I mean, what, what would be the point of that? You'd just leave it there, wouldn't you? But they've repealed it, especially. And so Section 32. We're after of the Legislative Instruments Act 2003. Let's have a look at that. Okay, Legislative Instruments and Notifiable Instruments. Part 1, 15, C, 16, 17, 19, 36, 37, 38. Yeah, 32 seems to be missing. So that's been repealed as well. So, look, all our laws are required to be... Uh, put in by proclamation by the uh, Governor General or Governor General, whatever he wants to call himself. So the Corporations Act 2001, all these uh, criminal codes and all these other laws we're operating under isn't even an effective law because they've repealed the proclamation. And they're still telling you that it's in force. How can it be in force if its proclamation has been repealed? You know, repealing something does something. It's not an inert act. This is why they did it. The Corporations Act 2001 is not enforced. We are operating under the Uniform Commercial Code. We're operating through the US, the Federal Government's CIK, Central Index number uh, is 805157, and New South Wales Mining Corporation is 71545. That's why. So they don't even need to have an Australian law because we're not even operating under it and this is how cocky they've got. These are the caretakers of our laws and they just know, well, we're under the UCC, let's just use that. We won't even, we'll recall proclamations and we won't even tell people. Guys, this is the back of the certificate, the form my mother filled in to allegedly register a name for me. And when we went to apply, you can apply for this in New South Wales, you do it through the register of birth, deaths and marriages, you can get yours. They're 40 bucks, you've got to have ID to do it, so if you are out of the system, you'll need someone else to do it for you. And this document when, because my mother applied for this, when she went to get it, they rang up and asked her, why do you want it? Why do you want it? You can't use it for anything. You can't use it for identification, is what BDM said. And you, they're absolutely right. You cannot use this for identification because this de-identifies you. So I want to show you why. This is, I think, this is the undo document. It says a lot more. It says, I, Amanda Iana, registrar, certify this is a reproduction of an original document that was deemed in my custody at the time the image was made. So this is in her custody. Not mine hers and she's signed for it. So if I go and apply for a birth certificate from that 
that's made from the record created from that uh, contract that my mother entered into with birth, deaths and marriages, then I'm applying for something that's not mine. I don't own it. I don't have custody of it. I can't be responsible for it. Now, custody is very interesting because a custody is uh, to be trustee of something. So she's your trustee. That's what this was made for. There's two names on it. Well, there's, there should be two names on it. There's uh, two trademarks, Rowan Laurian, which is the beneficiary, which is the one they just will not let you come. And that will just do dumb, dumb shit, like talk to you and go, oh, you're Mr. Hilda, you're Mr. Laurian. They'll make it up to avoid calling you your correct identifier for the beneficiary because it's not a name, it's an identifier. So that makes that form false. Um, but in saying that, everything is false because it's all working in legal fiction. So they set up these two accounts, the Christian name and one and the surname. And that's your trust. And the custody is uh, what they do. So there we go. The protective care or guardianship of someone or something. The property was placed in the custody of a trustee. So that's your Sesta Key by estate. That's your money, that's your share of the land you live on because it's yours. Um, it's also imprisonment, being taken into custody. If someone's got custody of something, you're not responsible for it and that's how trusts work. You know, you don't own the stuff but it's used for your, your good. And this is what they don't want. This is why they don't want you to use your date of registration of the Christian identifier, or the date of, depending when you were born, or the Christian name if you were born a bit earlier, because they did change it over. Just remember the difference between a name and an identifier. Uh, you know the, the picture of the all capitals. So. That's why they they've got to keep you in the other one, because otherwise they lose the money. Because when a trustee can't find the beneficiary, the trustee gets the money. <laughs> so you see why they want that job, yeah? Um, care, guardianship, charge, keeping safe, worship, responsibility, protection, guidance, tutelage, more. So there you go. That's She has custody of those two things. Now I'm meant to be the beneficiary, um, but they want to make me the trustee. So she's the trustee, now she wants to create another entity, which is Rowan, Laurie and Hilda, which that can be in title case as well, that can be perfectly written, but that still doesn't exist because that's not on the origin originating document. That's another, that's a third entity. And then they want me to be that entity, which is a corporate one, and be the, then I'll take custody of that document through the birth certificate and that estate, and I'll be responsible for paying the bills. I can't use any of it because a trustee cannot access the principal. I can't touch my money. <laughs> and because I'm not being Rowan Laurie and I've got no one to pay it to, except Amanda Ryanna, who's representing the Queen. Interesting, I did a bit of work on the word register, or registrar. RE means real, which is what the, they're trying to, the royal family trying to say, we're the real ones, you're all corporate, you're all dead, we don't, you don't have any rights. So, and... Uh, and gestate to carry. So it means to carry the Queen, which is what you're doing. Have a look in your wallet or your purse at all your documents. You're carrying around her, all capitals, pictures of letters that are her Crown copyright. And so they can go, well, you must be, you must have, you've got custody of those, those accounts. And remember the police are auditors and auditors are people who look at accounts. <laughs> and that's how you're, that's how they get you. Now, trustee, we'll move on a bit here. So there's, there we go, Latin, custodia. Late Middle English from the Latin custodia, custos guardian. So someone who guards something, looks after it. And that's a trustee, isn't it? You've got to protect the estate from marauders and make sure it's uh, looked after for the beneficiary. Um, they just give you the option of being the trustee or the beneficiary, uh, kinda but becoming the beneficiary is very hard. The story in Genesis, I think it's, it's uh, 3, 22, 24, something like that, where the, the cherub, uh, I think it is, and the flaming sword uh, prevents you from reaching out again and grabbing the fruit from the tree of life. Well, this is getting back to your 
your Christian name. And it's interesting because a cherub is an angel and an angel is a messenger. So they send you the message, which is a letter, which is an apostolos or an apostle, which is a letter to a higher authority because you're the highest authority. Everything comes from us. We're, we're, uh, we're the Asphalis. So the guardian is the letter that they've sent to you. And the flaming sword, or well, flames is Lucifer, isn't it? And hell and the devil. And sword is S word, serpent word, the all capitals again. And you can start really saying it when you look into these sort of these little stories in the Bible. And a guardian, a defender, protector, or keeper. So, protector, defender, preserver, champion, custodian, warden, guard, keeper. So that's that's a trustee. The person who looks after and is legally responsible for someone who can't manage their own affairs. So, anyway, that's guardian. So this is a trustee. So we've just been through. Okay, trustee means trustee on some express trust, howsoever created. So there's no no mechanism really specified here, and includes the heir or personal representative. Well, there you go. A person's a corporation a company, a representative of the company such as a trustee. So a trustee is now representing a company and every other person, (laughs) so every other company, society or corporation upon whom the duty of such a trust shall have developed and also any official manager, assignee, liquidator or other like officer, (laughs) auditor, the guy that checks your accounts to make sure you're running your account properly for the beneficiary which is you but you're not there so the uh, the other trustee becomes the beneficiary and they get to take it. So, uh, under any act relating to a joint stock company or to bankruptcy or to insolvency and also to an executor or administrator. Jeez, guys, this sounds straight out of a, uh, a Corporations Act, doesn't it? A trustee, this is uh, very, very much uh, legal fiction and all the offices of corporations and the corporations act we just looked at doesn't exist well guess what this is out of the crimes act 1900 why does the crimes act that it deals only with people have corporations societies companies trustees (laughs) and everything else in there like that that's because this this is the they've put all our criminal law under a legal fiction and they I can't believe they've I guess they got away with it for a long time it's insanely dangerous because if you can work out now how to get past the uh, <laughs> the cherub and the flaming sword which is your certificate of registration of still birth or live born whatever it's live birth in New South Wales or in Queensland your um, certificate of birth if you can get that then that proves that they have custody and it's not yours and you applied for cust- for access to cust- the account that they have in their custody which is identified by the all capitals uh, word marks the, the crown copyright trademarks so you've applied f- to use the Queen's trademark that she went into a contract with your mother or your father they didn't technically register you because that would be slavery so they registered something and then you go and apply for it an account and then they've got these police officers these police auditors running around making sure that the account's okay and that's all done under a legal fiction none of it none of it is uh, compulsory and they don't have their uh, because I said before they're an administrator the US Federal Reserve they don't have constitutional power even though I doubt that their constitutional power would even give them the authority to even the Queen I think she's she's a sovereign company her, uh, a corporation sold herself she's not a sovereign so and that happened in the 1649 or somewhere there so she's a company so who owns her who are the shareholders in her is it us is it someone else um, and if she's a company she can't hold public office I think I showed you that in the last video that um, corporations can't hold public office so she's just a CEO of a private company and all they're doing is offering you the use of Crown Copyright under the Crown Copyrights Act 
to hold their account, which will be enforced by the police, who are auditors uh, run th who are paid from the United Nations through the US Federal Reserve, because the Federal Reserve is a good one to use because the US has the biggest military, and then they can enforce their contracts. Pacta sunt servanda, contracts must be kept. So that's in Unidroit. So all these courts are Unidroit, which is Rome. So Rome is the Vatican. The Vatican operates through the CIA in America and the US Federal Reserve. The CIA, which probably should be Catholic <laughs> Information Agency. Well, they're an agency, aren't they? They're an agent for somebody. Who? It's the Vatican. It's the Vatican.